So some of our classmates were, were around and they separated, they, they separated us and went and got the director, the school director. And he came, he and his wife came, and instead of reprimanding either of us, they didn't even try to figure out what happened first. They just, they called a school meeting. They called a school meeting and it was, it was like, it was almost like this, except it was a, a long table um, instead of a square and they made us sit opposite each other. Allison and I sat directly across from each other and everybody else sitting around the table and then they had us each give our side of what happened. Well, I explained about growing up in Georgia, growing up in the segregated South and, and having been called a nigger so many times and, and explaining what that made me feel like. Um, and I just couldn't take it. I wouldn't take that anymore. And Allison had used that word. And as, of, as, as I was telling my side of the story, I'm looking at, at her and I see that Allison is crying. And I just thought she was, you know, just being wimpy, um, just, just being a softy, you know, she's, or something. I, I didn't understand why she was crying, but she was crying. So then she told her side of the story. And um, as it turns out, she had not used the word nigger. She, she was, she, she had said something about Niger. Niger, who is a character, and I even looked that up to see if it was true, um, it, who was a beloved character in where she was from, had been, and she'd read about it, she'd heard about this character in books when she was growing up. And she was, I guess she was making some comparison to Niger. But I heard that word because I didn't know anything about Niger. But I knew nigger and I thought, you know, because she had an accent, she was probably just mispronouncing it. So um, she had not said that word. And not only that, she didn't know anything about nigger. She didn't know anything about the prejudice in this country. And she was so sorry that she had hurt my feelings. That's why she was crying. She was crying because to, to think that she had said something that was so hurtful really made her feel bad. Well, I just cannot tell you that was just the most amazing thing that I had ever experienced. The thought that a white person would feel bad about hurting my feelings, to remember how I grew up, I, couldn't, I would never have imagined that. I would never have imagined that. So it was a, it was a life-changing experience for me. Because, because what it did, what that experience did was to make me hear that word differently. Now I would be called that again many times after that. But when I, when I was called a nigger again, I thought I would listen to, um, I looked at the person who was using that word and tried to figure out why are they, so, what, they're either afraid of me or intimidated by me so much that they're using that word to try and, and demean me. So I, it, didn't, it didn't have the same power. It didn't have the same effect because I knew that I wasn't a nigger. I knew that I wasn't that. So I, um, um, one time this, I, w I went to look at a house and it was an older white gentleman that was selling the house. He had talked to me on the phone and I've heard people tell me many times that I don't sound black. Do you know what a black person sounds like? <laughs> Do you? Well, you? Can you tell if a person is black just by hearing them? Do I sound black? <laughs> well then you can't tell. You can't tell. So because people, this is, a, this is what prejudice does for you. Not, and this is prejudice not just of color but of region. Everybody from the south, it is assumed, sounds like y'all just come on over here and, 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 and set y'all self down for a while. 
<laughs> if y'all don't talk like that, then you ain't from the South. Well, I've heard, I've had many people tell me that I could not be, I could not be from the South because I didn't have the accent. But I also have been told that I don't sound black. Hmm, well, what does, how am I supposed to sound? So I had called this man on the phone and apparently he didn't think I sounded black because when I got there and he saw me, he said something, um, cause he didn't, I didn't get close enough to have a conversation with him, but I did hear his comment of nigger. So I figured it was one of those cases where he didn't know who he was talking to. So I heard that word and he, when I, he was an old man. So he was obviously afraid of me or just didn't like the idea of a black person buying his house. So he, he used that word and he turned around. Well, I chased him. I ran after him and he saw me coming towards him and he started running. Now he was, he was so old that I, I had to run slowly not to catch him because I, I didn't want to catch him, but I did that just, just because he made me mad. And I, I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't hit him because <laughs> this was years later, so I knew better. And, and at that time, I was old enough that I, they would have put me in jail for attacking an old man if I'd done that. <laughs> but that was just another example. You know, I was called that many times afterwards, but I reacted differently. I didn't, I didn't have the need or the desire to hit him to do physical harm because he had done harm to me because I knew it was just a word that he was using trying to make me feel bad just because I looked differently. And it didn't work. It didn't work. Now I wouldn't suggest that you call me a nigger today, <laughs> but, but if I am called that, it does not have the same, it does not have the same power in me. I am more tempted to, um, to turn that around and want to know, well, what does that mean? Just like I just did. Well, what does a black person sound like? And, but if I'm black, I ha this has to be how a black person sounds. You know, you, once you learn the motive for something, then it gives you the power to, to, not, be, to not allow yourself to, to be subjected to, what, to the, um, the prejudice that the speaker is trying to impose on you. So I went to the mountain school. I discovered that the world is more than black and white, but that was a part of my education that was transformative. It changed me to discover that you cannot look at a person and tell who they are just because they look different from you, just because they sound different from you. So you can you can learn, you could, what you can take from this story is when um, I, can, I can say without even knowing that you have experienced prejudice from being here because you speak differently, because you look differently, just don't, you, don't worry about that. You take that and understand that the person is not, is not reacting to you as the individual they're reacting to someone who looks and sounds different from them. And you can be a part of their education. That's my story. <laughs>